Adrian was just saying, the main uh, cost reduction potential for wave energy converters um, is uh, structure or is related to structure costs. So that's the main motivation also for my uh, PhD project. And the topic is the cost and performance optimization of wave energy converters. And my supervisors are David, Henry, and Adrian. Um, and today I'll just give a short introduction to the type of wave energy converter I'm using for my um, optimization, the motivation and objectives for my PhD thesis, the steps to reach these objectives, and then I'll just give a brief introduction to the optimization process that I have been implementing in the last months and the future work. So the wait, I'm sorry, the wave energy converter I'm uh, focusing on for my PhD thesis is a point absorber. And important to know is that the maximal power extraction uh, will take place when the frequency of the incoming waves matches the natural frequency of the device. And the natural frequency of the device will depend on the geometry of the device. And it's not trivial how to design or find this geometry. So, and at the same time, the main cost reduction potential as said is related to the structure. Um, and there are existing studies that have done geometry optimization of wave energy converters to maximize performance and minimize cost. But they were uh, limited by mainly two factors. First, that the costs were represented by the device size and um, some of the shapes that came out of this um, optimization look them like this. Um, this was a study done by the late Dr. McCabe. And um, these shapes might then not be, um, might not survive in high energetic seas or might not be cost efficient to manufacture. And um, another of the limitations of these uh, previous studies was that they were based on frequency domain models. So they don't account for real PTO and control systems. Um, therefore, the main goal of my project, or of my PhD thesis, is to bring together these two factors. The, um, so to minimize the LCOE cost related to geometry and to maximize the hydrodynamic performance of the device. And so to have a multi-objective geometry optimization of the, of the wave energy converter. Okay. So to achieve this, first I, uh, I have been re-implementing the method used by the late Dr. McCabe, which is unfortunately, unfortunately no longer available. And I'm doing this based on his two last papers where he describes this method. And um, then I want to further develop this optimization process by including a time domain model and other optimization algorithms. And then I want to apply the, the optimization process to various objective functions, so not only to maximize power and reduce size, but to take into account other factors that have an effect on the LCOE and that might be related to the geometry of the device, such as um, installability, site suitability, maintainability, manufacturability, and all the elities that <laughs> Adrian mentioned before as well. And then the uh, long-term goal or the final goal of my project is to have this multi-objective optimization. Um, so I would then explain you a little bit what the optimization process is that I have been re-implementing, which is based on the work done by McCabe mainly. And this is the flowchart for it, but I'll go through each of the steps shortly. So the geometry definition. To define the geometry, we want to define it in a way that is um, as flexible as possible so that we can get as possibly very different shapes and shapes that maybe we don't think about by ourselves. So the geometry is defined with uh, a number of vertices of a polyhedron with a, with a ZX symmetry plane. 
and um, then further points are interpolated between these vertices and they are then approximated with the cubic piece splines so that we obtain a, a bicubic B spline surface and bicubic B splines are just um, most differentiable curves that approximate the points but don't necessarily go through them. And this is just a shape, an example shape that of, of a surface that we could obtain with this definition but they can vary and you could obtain the shapes that we have seen before through this definition. Uh, so once we know how to define the geometry, we have to know how we define the wave climate we want to take or where we want to put the geometry to extract the, the device, to extract the power. So for the wave climate, I'm using an irregular C represented by the superposition of various linear waves and um, the relation of the amplitude to the frequency of this wave is represented in a wave spectrum and I'm using 200 frequencies to represent this wave spectrum and I'm using a Brett-Schneider spectrum which is um, commonly used for fully developed seas. Okay, once we know um, the shape and how we want to represent the wave climate, uh, so how many frequencies we, we need to represent each of the sea states, we can calculate the hydrodynamic characteristics of the device and to do this, we assume uh, linear, or yeah, we use linear wave theory and assume small body motions. And the main, for a, if you would write the equation of motion for a heaving buoy, the main terms that you would take into account are the radiation because of the uh, displacement of water through the device motion, the friction coming from, for example. Um, yeah, if you can account for friction losses, the hydrostat uh, the hydrostatic force, hydrostatic force, and the excitation force, <coughs> and you can solve this uh, differential equation with this particular integral. And I just want to show that um, you can reduce it to a function that just depends on the frequency. Uh, by using these um, complex amplitudes and then the velocity and the farther um, derivatives will just be a multiplication with i omega and from this function will be will describe the oscillation of the device and um, the hydrodynamic uh, coefficients will be the added mass the added damping and the excitation force, which we, which I obtained from WOMIT, which is a BEM-based model, but you could also use NEMO or AQUA or there are other models. And just for later, so you can represent this function in terms of um, velocity and uh, an intrinsic impedance instead of the displacement. And just want to introduce you to the intrinsic impedance because it's important for the power calculation. So. Once we have the hydrodynamic characteristics and we know where we want to place our device, in, our, in this case I'm using a, a scatter matrix from the West Shetland, and um, you can calculate the power that this device can extract at this location. And for this I'm using, a, I'm still using the frequency domain model, and you just need to include then the PTO force in the um, motion equation from before. And um, I'm assuming an optimal linear complex conjugate control, which means that the impedance of the um, power takeoff will be will be the same as the will be the complex conjugate of the intrinsic impedance of the device. Yes, and if you include this in the um, initial equation, you get this equation, so that. Um, all the terms of the equation are actually obtained from WOMIT and then the, these, uh, the friction losses are, con are accounted for as 10% of the uh, maximal damping coefficient losses. 
or as the damping coefficient, 10% of the damping coefficient. Maximum, 10% of the maximum of the damping coefficient. Um, and then, oops, with this, um, this is the displacement, so from the velocity and the uh, damping coefficients, we can calculate the instantaneous power to the PTO, and with the, if we average that for the 200 frequencies that we're taking into account, um, we can calculate the mean power extraction per year in that location by multiplying it with the occurrence matrix of each of the C states at that location. Um, so in my case, I'm just using the power as my objective function for the optimization. So we are looking for the geometries that perform <coughs> best according to their power extraction. And um, so this will be the input to my optimization procedure. And then if the, if the preset number of iterations is not achieved, then it will go back and go through the process again. And if it's achieved, then it reached, then it will finish the process. So for the optimization procedure, I'm using genetic algorithms. And genetic algorithms are optimization algorithms based on evolution theory, and they more or less emulate the survival of the fetus individuals in a population. And how this works is we have an initial population. In our case, it would be an initial number of geometries, and we select the best, in the, the best performing <coughs> individuals in this population, in our case, based on, the, on their power their performance and these individuals will then reproduce <laughs> and um, creating new individuals that will carry the, the genetic information from the parents and then some of this information will be mutated and the two best performing individuals from the parent generation will be reinserted in the children generation to keep the, the genetic information in the population. So this children generation will then be our new population that we will then analyze for the power extraction. So this would be then a new set of geometries that you then analyze again. Uh, the main advantage of using genetic algorithms is that you can um, analyze various geometries simultaneously the main challenge is to define the mutation rate in a way that you converge to into a, an optimal solution without converging into a local um, optimum. So, exactly, so then we would be here again with the new set of geometries and then we go through this again and I just define, a, or we just define a, um, number of generations that we want to go through and then you just hope that it converges into a, an optimal shape. So this is the, the optimization process that I have been implementing in the last month. And what I, it is almost working, um, but it takes quite a long time to run. So I hope to have some results by after Christmas. Um, so the future work is to, in general, to uh, define, so now the geometry is defined with 11 vertices and in a spherical manner and I want to define the, the geometry uh, differently, varying the number of vertices and the approximation that I'm using. And then um, by now I'm using a frequency domain model to calculate the power, but um, the goal is to also to, to implement, to incorporate the time domain model that we have in the department. And then I'm using genetic algorithms by the moment, but I would also like to implement a particle swarm optimization just to compare the algorithms and see what is more, more efficient. And then now I'm optimizing with a single objective, but the uh, final goal is to have, a, as I said, a multi-objective optimization. So these are the long-term goals. And the next steps to take are um, to change the GA settings to see how the performance can be changed and if we can uh, converge to global maxima, global minima instead of local minima or how that is affected by the settings, the particle swarm optimization and compare both optimization processes and then to look at additional parameters 
such as the geometry, defini the geometry definition that vary the degrees of freedom that I'm taking into account because now I'm just optimizing in search as McCabe did and um, to look at the, mass the effect of the mass distribution on the geometry. And thank you very much. And if you have any questions. <laughs>